meet tomorrow take place as we play down to an eventual winner. Uh, getting a good look at what's going on here. You can also head over to the Battlefy and check out the brackets and the deck list and see what's been going on. Thing, kind of whenever they want to. And Faceless Manipulator has that big punch that it can pack against that, where uh, you, you know they play a cube and then you faceless the cube and suddenly you have harnessed all that power without really doing any of the work. And so for me, the double Dream Petal Florist is a big we nod to Faceless Manipulator. The utility that it presents strength. and the way that it can get this kind of to zero, it can help you combo with Malagos pretty easily on its own. Faceless Manipulator will also help out in this matchup. It also has that versatility of, you know, giving Viper an answer to something like Mountain Giant, where you can faceless it and then naturalize it, and then suddenly you are the aggressor. But right now, Admirable, you, for a very appropriate reason. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, Wild Growth and Nourish are clearly two of the bread and butter cards in Druid. Uh, but I think that they're especially important when your opponent isn't applying early minion pressure. So. You know, in a matchup like Zoo, Wild Growth, I think, loses a lot of its potential power. Is, is you know, they're trying to get out Flame Imps, and they're trying to Happy Ghoul you and play Kalises and whatnot. But against a deck like Even Warlock, that additional mana allows you to operate with such a different curve of utility, where naturalizing a minion doesn't feel quite as bad because you're ramping up and you're getting to card draw points. Uh, just being able to unlock the potential of Nourish for mana and then have Ultimate Infestation ready you know, this is massive. I and mean, we're looking at a turn four Lich King and then follow up. This is yeah. insane. Oh, not only a turn four Lich King, but a faceless onto the Lich King, naturalizing any threat Green Sheep can then play. Yeah. I and mean, just keeping on trucking. Green Sheep needs to draw back to back Mountain Giants, really, I think, to be <laughs> in a good position here. He doesn't have that. Lich King's going to be test number one. And then, as you said, the Faceless Manipulator able to duplicate anything that's there and then have the Naturalize to blow it up. This is a nightmare for Green Sheep right now. And Green Sheep knows that Faceless Manipulator is a 2 up in the list. Yeah. So if he takes note of that, he may have to just answer this Lich King outright. In order to do so, it would require him delaying how much pressure he can put onto the board. He can't kill it on the board right now. He'd have to dedicate a Hellfire and clear his own board off. Now, granted, if he does that, it's, he's actually not in the worst shape. You know, Viper's pretty set to take turn nine off here uh, with a poor Lich King draw. But the problem with that is that, or I'm sorry, a nine mana turn rather, not turn nine. The problem with that is that Viper's on nine mana early. That's bad news. That was an explosive start for the Viper. There's no other way to put it. I mean, top decking the Spellbreaker does allow for Green Sheep to kind of, you know, put a little band-aid on the problem. But, oh my gosh, can even go faceless on the Lich King. The Floop will then become a Lich King that is not necessarily silenced. Can then play the si uh, the new Lich King and just push this 8 damage face if he chooses to do so. Yeah, I would apologize for the spectator. Uh Having the hover on this Lich King, we'll get that fixed as soon as Just letting you there really know he's silenced. <laughs> and, There's uh, an X right there. That's a, that's an, it's a good interaction that you pointed out, though, with the way that Floop and Faceless Manipulator works. So Faceless Manipulator, as the battle cry, becomes a copy of the minion, which then that's what Floop recognizes as the minion, is whatever the Faceless Manipulator copies in that instance. I like being aggressive here. I like copying this. And I like just playing this and pushing face. Oh, yeah. I love this play. I mean, you don't even necessarily need to play the Fluke Lich King, or just, you know, consideration. Clearing up the Twilight Drake means that it's going to be nearly impossible for Green Sheep to answer both of these, let alone one of them. Oh, yeah, Green Sheep is super dead here. Can he do anything? Uh, what can you do? Your opponent played a turn... Was it turn four Lich King on you? Turn one Wild Growth, turn two Wild Growth, turn three Nourish, turn four Lich King. Your opponent played two 8-8s eight on turn four and turn five. That's what Green Sheep stacks. Yeah, that's to what do. Green Sheep was supposed to do. I think he missed the memo. I think someone emailed him. He didn't check his email. Just gave him to Viper. Yeah, Viper just took the role of even Warlock this game. That's a good role to take upon. There's more than one way to discount 8-8s. <laughs> eight that's, that's one thing. I, <laughs> Who needs to discount the 8 8s with hand size when you can just make your mana enough to play them? <laughs> yeah, you discount the rest of your cards too. This keeps Green Sheep alive for a turn. A turn. <laughs> a, a turn is exactly the right way to put it. Actually, 
It doesn't always keep him alive for a turn either. <laughs> he could if just draw the other Moonfire. Yeah, I mean, Moonfire for one. And I think he, did. Wow! he just draws the other Moonfire. This game is over. That is a nutso start for Viper. And I tell Green you what. Sheep hasn't even hit seven mana yet. That, it, sometimes, sometimes. I mean, that. there's no denying that that was one of the nutso draws that was out there. That's why you play the deck. Holy smokes. Because it does that. It, and, you know, Shutterwalk Shaman, I think, is one of the matchups that Green Chief's really going to struggle against Druid with. And what I can really do about it. Yeah, I definitely think an open deckless format changes that a lot because Viper knows that he's up against even Warlock. So Naturalize goes from, you know, a mulligan consideration instead to... To an instant keep. Yeah, it's like a, it's like one of your premium cards that you have in the matchup. And so we're moving on to Death Rattle Hunter versus... Uh, Malago Street for Green Sheep, and uh, you know this is definitely not one of the matchups he's looking for. All right, it's Green Sheep's turn to do Malaga. Do just Druid things. Were yeah. you there when Dan and I were talking about that? Yeah. Just Druid things. I was hearing it, but Death Rattle Hunter is a tough deck for Druid to beat. Pretty tough deck for Druid to beat. You want to talk to me about it? I'll talk to you about it, Admirable. I'll let you know the down low. So you see that Devil Sore Egg right there? Oh, yeah. It's got a 5-5 five, five sitting inside of it. You see that Play Dead right there? Yeah. That's going to summon a 5-5 five, five sitting inside of that. You see that Terror Scale Stalker right there? Yeah. It's going to summon another 5-5. Five, five. I want you to guess how many 5-5s five, that is that off the top of your head. That sounds like you're going to get two of them immediately with a third one you yeah. know, waiting for you later. Yeah, you get two on your portfolio immediately. You get one return for the investment later on. Big that dividends. is the reason why this deck is just so powerful, though, is sometimes you get these explosive starts. Then Carnivorous Cube is going to come up on the follow-up, clear off this egg. There's going to be three 5-5s, five a 4-6, and a 3-3 three three that Green Sheep is going to have to deal with by turn 5. So what I'm hearing is that Green Sheep's in trouble again. That seems to be a common trend so far this tournament, is that Green Sheep is in trouble. So if you're if you're in Green Sheep's spot right here, you know, I, I am not much for an Egg Scrambler, but given what ended up happening last game, you know, is there is there ever a chance that you want to scramble this egg? It looks to me like he's much more interested in just fighting for tempo, which I don't I, blame him. I think you have to fight for tempo. I don't think you can let what happened last game, you know, that kind of crazy draw kind of dictate how you play future games. But right now, whew. when you're running hot, you're running hot. Well, that's a pretty decent one. It, it allows him to just, you know, maybe fight a little bit. But, you know, I'm staring at Katharina. I'm staring at Cube. And I think this is going to be I mean, rough. That's one of the great things about Death Rattle Hunter is not only do you have that early game, but when you have that early game and let's say it fails, right? Let's say this fails. And by, by, by fail, I mean it doesn't actually end the game. You then have just Katharina to end the game. You have some of the best early game. And some of the best late game. That's why this deck is as strong as it is. Oh boy. This is not looking good for Green Sheep right now. I mean, he's looking like he's going to have to use both Spreading Plagues to, to just buy time. He's drawing for outs, though. Could just draw and then gain six armor, use the Spellstone. Could also use the Moonfire to clean up another one. But he's using so much burn just to clean up these Devil Swords. And there is still threat after threat. Yeah, I feel like using the Moonfire to clear up, I, I don't think is much of an option. Uh, you know, most of my experience uh, with Death Rattle Hunter and with Druid is that if they can't Malagos burst the heck out of you, they're just not going to get there. I do agree with that. So that's why we saw Green Sheep hold on to that Moonfire is because he recognizes that he's going to need this to win the game. Yeah. I mean, he would be effectively turning the Moonfire into just five extra health in that instance, and I just don't think he can afford that. You know, we are approaching the weakest turn of the game for Viper. Turn seven. Yeah. Well, you know, Swamp King Dread included in there, sometimes you get a big, powerful seven. And maybe that's a consideration for more players to look into running something like Swamp King Dread, is it gives you that turn seven you wouldn't necessarily have otherwise. Like you said, turn seven is a fairly weak play for Hunter overall. The most it can really do is kind of replay one of its six drops, maybe revisit some, you know, cube activators if the cube does come onto play. Yeah. You can develop something like Deathstalker, Rexar, Mossy R for the tech options, but. I don't. I mean, it's, those are very niche scenarios. That's like, that's the middling stages of Hunter, where I, you know, I always feel like I'm in trouble if I haven't secured the lead by that point. I'm like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to get there this game. Having to go with poisonous spiders to try and contest this board. 
Yeah, I think the idea here is that Green Sheep wants to put pressure on uh, on Katharina in this spot. So, you know, when it's going to come out on turn eight, he wants to be able to just have something to go with it. You know, with Lich King in hand, he really wants to play that. So you just got to do something to try to fight for board. Anything you can to try to put Viper on a back foot. I wonder if on Viper's side, he may want to use one of these spider bombs to kind of try and pseudo block something like a Lich King. I wonder if he's very ambitious both. play. I mean, there is the very aggressive mm -hmm. play of putting both of these spider bombs onto Zilliax and pushing some damage. However, you know, that comes with a bit of consequences. You would have to sacrifice one of the minions to the spider. That way it couldn't clear it up. You likely have to sacrifice both. You know, that, I, I that would, would certainly prompt Green Sheep to use a Moonfire at that point. Yeah, I definitely don't think, you know, putting these spider bombs on. Maybe maybe one, not necessarily both. There's the first. Is he going for it? He's wow. going for it. Is he just shipping it upstairs? Oh, my. Oh. So this is actually interesting to me because the spider bombs, when the first spider ends up clearing, even if Green Ship's able to pop the shield, the other spider's going to die in that in that cycle. So he's shut off the poison, and he's pushed extra damage here. With Katharina and King Crush in hand, he's never going to have an opportunity to play more cards. So he's trying to secure that two extra damage to just make the big push afterwards. I think that's really smart. I think it's a good use of mana for uh, for Viper that turn. I think turns. he definitely pushes a lot of damage this turn. It, it protects the 4-6 and the 5-5, five five, but it does kind of sacrifice such a large threat. But maybe, you know, Viper's thinking, you know, Spider Bomb may just be useful for dealing 4 damage. I mean, Spider Bomb ultimately is not going to get that much value in killing a minion besides maybe potentially this Lich King, which there's Hunter's Mark 4 and a Deathstalker Rexar. Yeah. The Rexar picked up is... You know, quite good here, I'd say. Just a way to, to deal damage to Lich King. Whether that was Candle Shot, Flanking Strike. Those are the two main ones. I can't think of another one off the top of my head. Ciliax is gone. So, yeah, pretty much those two. And I'm pretty sure, well, no, the Spreading Plate will inevitably stop enough damage. The King Crush would come down, but, you know, not do quite enough. Hmm. Only the cube would be able to connect, doing four damage. Could opt to, you know, hear a powerful armor, of course, as well. I think Green Sheep's dead. Like, Spreading Plague's it just... Oh, I think he's dead as well. He, he just can't win the game that way. And so, you know, looking at the, the, the plays available to Green Sheep, if he chooses to go with Spreading Plague, My you're delaying the inevitable. So, so he has to make a play that's going to try to secure a lead for him. And that really, you know, to me, boils down to some kind of Alex Straza turn. And you can see Green Sheep trying to find anything that could lead to a winning line. You know, we can see that Viper's got the goods. Death but Green Sheep's trying to find any iteration my where Viper's hand is isn't big cards. And Green Sheep gets that one turn to draw a card, and maybe it changes everything. It's a defensive Alex Straza, and you hope. I agree with Green Sheep's line here. We can see the King Crush is going to end the game. But you play to your outs. You don't play to survive play to win the game. That's what Green Sheep's trying to do right yep. now. Not not happening right now, though. Viper, quick 2-0 lead. These have been some crazy starts from Viper here. Oh. I mean, this just goes to show you, Druid and Hunter are widely considered the most powerful classes right now for a reason. Yeah. And these two games show you why. In uh, a very awkward way in every step of the way. And I think one of the big reasons is Devil Sword Egg. Just the fact that uh, you have five fives that line up against Spreading Plague is a major deal. Mojo Master Zihi in the opening hand for Viper. That's gonna it's gonna spell a lot of trouble for Green Sheep, especially because he's going to want to be ramping to those ultimate infestation turns. We well, it could spell a lot of trouble. I definitely think it will. I'm seeing a twig in hand for Green Sheep. I'm and seeing a Master Zihi in the hand for I, Viper. Yeah, but I'm also seeing. You know, not a minion right now. He's going to be relying on the, the hero power to try to stick a minion in play. You know, Blessing of Kings is pretty important uh, to be able to land in the matchup. He does have two turns to draw, you know, that Corpse Taker or that Spirit of the Tiger we were talking about. Yep, two Argent Protectors, Crystal Smith Kangor works, uh, two copies of Hydrologist, two copies of Wild Pyromancer, and like you said, the two Corpse Takers and the two Spirit of the Tiger. So plenty of ways to stick stuff if you draw it. Crystal Gansmith is pretty strong here. You know, being able to have that Divine Shield, being able to have that guaranteed target next turn. 
It's very difficult for Green Sheep to answer this, but he's going to go ahead and knock the Divine Shield off. I'm going to be yep. surprised to see Viper potentially use the coin for Blessing of the Kings to get something going. But... Oh, yeah. That's the turn. It just makes your next couple of turns. Oh, never mind. Green Sheep does have a naturalize. That is true. Does he feel safe against this, though? No. He does not. <laughs> I think he's going to naturalize a 5-6. I think he may let this sit for a turn. Well, one of the things you have to consider is the mana expenditure as well. You know, I imagine Green Sheep needs a little bit of extra help with this hand, and so he's probably eyeing Branching Pass. You, you have to think about how your curve's going to pan out. You know, going into 19 is not the end of the world. You have plenty of ways to, to recover from that position, but you have to find those ways to recover. Blessing of Kings is just, it's such an important card in the matchup. It's like night and day. Like when, I, when my even paladin opponent doesn't have Blessing of Kings and I'm playing Druid, I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Dodge the bullet there. That's how I feel when my Druid opponent doesn't have Wild Growth. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, dodge the bullet there. <laughs> You gotta keep drawing the cards, I think. I mean, Green Sheep is in a very, very sticky situation, but you gotta find a way to get out of it somehow. I mean, if you're a Viper here, do you commit another Viper? Oh, Viper's just going for it. Oh, said, why you not? Know what? The Deal first, with it. The 5 6 did die. Is the 9 10 gonna die? Yeah. 9 10 will die, I will. It's if gonna. He, if he dies. Hey. He dies. <laughs> Interesting pickup for Green Sheep. Pretty powerful. We'll um, develop the arcane tyrant as well. Unfortunately, you know, he doesn't get the wild growth in there too. But you know, I don't think he's complaining too much. That was a really strong draw for him. Yeah. Well, the wild growth fitting in. You know, I, I think this is going to boil down to whether or not he draws ultimate infestation the turn after. If you don't draw a reason to utilize the mana, just probably save the wild growth and for card draw. It's pretty, pretty poor stuff picked up by by Viper here. I mean, this turn five is looking awfully weak. Oh, yeah. Definitely don't want a wild Pyromancer or quality A4-4, but, you know, maybe Viper considers it. Maybe Viper wants to do it just to clear the board, get a 1-1 one -one on the side. The weirdest part, though, is that Viper has this Mojo Master Zihi and is going to, you know, want to play it to kind of stunt the ultimate infestation turn. But Green Sheep's Twig will be at 1 when he does that. So, effectively, it'll do nothing. He's probably don't play it in that turn, then. But then you just give them an ultimate infestation. Well, I guess either way they have an ultimate infestation. Would you rather them have an ultimate infestation and be able to play the cards afterwards or make a subpar turn and then an ultimate infestation? The, the, I'd much rather them use the ultimate infestation than have struggle playing cards. I mean, Green Sheep has now used, he would have used Twig, he'll have used a Nourish, he'll have both Nourishes, he'll have used a Wild Growth. You know, he can have all the cards in the world, but if he can't play them, I feel like that's a bigger benefit. I'm curious to see. I mean, the, the big problem I'm seeing is that no plays really lining up against the board that Green Sheep has. Yeah, well, at least uh, going for Viper here is that Green Sheep is not currently on 10, so I don't think he's going to be too worried about playing the Mojo Master just yet. But it's definitely, you know, a weird scenario. Yeah, kind of an underwhelming use of Sunkeeper Tarum. But, you know, sometimes you take what you can take. There's that UI. Green Sheep's also having the trouble of, of hand space at the moment. I'm trying to think of how fancy Green Sheep could get here. He could go for a crazy play where he plays the Florist. Commits something like a Naturalize onto this. Pushes everything face, swings with the weapon, and then plays Ultimate Infestation. Thinking like Spellstone? Like Florist You could play both. You could, you could Spellstone. Not use the naturalize and then just. Yeah, you just trade it. Get 10 mana. You know, burning a card's a risk, but it's not the end of the world. It's Malagos, though. You give me a look like Malagos, you know, Malagos isn't. Well, he only burns a card if he if he doesn't draw the important cards, though. So, I mean, in this case, he gets to toss away a Moonfire and That's not really get much of it. That's a discounted Alex Straws I'm seeing in hand. This was really, I think, the fear for Viper was Green Sheep being able to pop off 
and then also have the florist during the pop off. Like that was, you know, one of the one of the big hitting scenarios, I think. Alex draws it looking kind of weak other than the fact that it's a two mana eight eight right now. I think being a two mana eight eight might just be good enough, especially because you can get Malfurion down beside it as well. Now Green Sheep's seen one equality hit. So trying to think if you know, is it is it worth it to just plow onto the board? Hmm. I think it may be worth it because even if it baits out the other equality, that means that there's no more equality left for Malagos. Oh, he can just stick that. Then he can just stick that. Ah. There's no more Tarim either. So I don't think there's any modification that will mess with the Malagoos. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's gonna, this is going to demand an answer. Spirit of the Tiger coming down. It's the card we were talking about. I wonder if that Spirit of the Tiger could be enough to carry through this. I mean, Green Sheep's turns. Like, the follow-up to this is not spectacular right now. I mean, if you're Green Sheep here, I wouldn't be surprised to just see as much cycle as possible. Start Flor fitting in that draw. I mean, Floris is down and Twig is down. And he's down a Moonfire. So he's got to deliver a lot of natural damage. But Viper's only at 15. It's true, but, you know, I mean, right now the burst is one Moonfire. I mean, to be honest, maybe Green Sheep just starts fitting in hero powers for attack and just pushing it face every turn. rather Because he is at a healthy life total. He may not necessarily need My to be defensive. Saved. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if you're Green Sheep here if you fit in a hero power for attack every turn. I like it. That's an expensive hero power. But we, well, you, when you draw that one, man, you know, it's looking a little bit better. I mean, you were going to eventually draw that, though. I don't think there's that many cards left for Green Sheep in the deck. Just like six. I do agree he should be uh, fitting in hero powers at, at this stage. It's just, you know, this is... It just feels like one of those slow plans where it's like... Does this work every single time? Because like now, Viper has the Zihi in hand. And when he smells this turn approaching, that's when he can unleash the Zihi and completely throw that for a loop. You know, Green Sheep's not gonna have the Malagos kill next turn. Should I? You can't risk playing the Malagos here because, or maybe you can, you know, but like Avenging Wrath can kill your Malagos and that's the last one you've got. But Avenging Wrath, what is it deal? Eight? Repentance. Ooh. I, to be honest, the only bad thing about Repentance is there's still one more Arcane Tyrant floating around there. But you're pretty confident Green Sheep doesn't have that right now. I'm trying to think. Let me look at uh, Green Sheep's list and see if there's any other minions like I do. I can kill Tech Potential. Well, that's Repentance. There's a Forbiddenness Floop. Second swipe drawn for Green Sheep. Honestly, you can just double swipe face. That's the thing, though, is if you double swipe face, your opponent knows what's going to happen. If you use the Malagos and the Moonfire, does your opponent Zihi you that way? Because if you use a double swipe, it's oh, face that's true. up at that point. They okay, so what if you. But oh if gosh, you Malagos I was thinking off the, I was thinking off the wall, what if you just, you know, ultimate infestation, but I'm, you know, you'd still go to six mana. You wouldn't necessarily have enough to go for that swipe Moonfire, but. You're exactly right. I completely forgot about that. This is an interesting turn for Green Sheep. And you can see he, the thought that's on his face right now. He's, like, going through everything in his mind. He's taking into account the cards. You know, it's an open deckless format uh, here at the Tour Stop. So he's going over every single thing he remembers and trying to find what makes this the absolute best. Death oh, this is interesting, turn. too. So if he My uses just the Moonfire... And Ace, wait, what's going on? He's using the double swipe to set up this uh, ultimate infestation. And he also gets to clear off the tiger as well. So what's going to happen is, yes, you, oh. are, you are exactly right. The Mojo Master will be able to come down, but maybe he can clean up the taunt minions and just get fit a hero power face as well. Just because he's done enough stuff to also stall out the board here. He's got plenty of time, even with Zeke hitting, to just get to ultimate position. Exactly. Again. And also with double spreading plague, you know, that's let's just go through the motions. That's turn six. Then turn seven is another spreading plague. Yes, then yes. healing twelve is turn eight. Turn nine, maybe naturalize a minion. Not and then you win. Watch. Yeah, I think this is really smart. It's a very weird alternate game plan, but if you if you think about everything that Viper's played so far, all the health gain is gone from Viper's deck. 
you're forcing the hand on the ZD in that position, and you get to defend yourself immensely with the spreading plagues, with the branching path, and with the naturalize. And I'm pretty sure, besides Lich King giving Death Coil, that there's no. I spoke too soon. True silver. True silver over two swings, but you have to swing into a one drop. Well, not necessarily yet. I mean, you know, Green Sheep can. I'm sorry, Viper can fight and clear off the board. And maybe, I mean, he has to do that quick, though, is the thing. He has to be able to get through this and then also substantiate defense. Another thing, there is just the possibility of naturalized branching pass for attack. Oh, yeah, so he has to fight for so board. So he has to fight for board. I mean, so maybe you the just. True Silver this turn would take him to four health after if he attacked a uh, 1 5 in this spot. I think you actually have ending route this turn. Hmm. But if you had the board cleared off, the True Silver champion would then take him up to six. On the second swing, I think you if he's able to connect face. I think you avenging wrath this turn because you also we have to remember there's spirit of the tiger on the board. That summons a six six. Yeah. Good. That was a very aggressive avenging wrath. It honestly worked out pretty good because Green Sheep doesn't get the full value from uh, spreading plague in this spot. He's going to end up with a one one taunt if he attacked with everything. Oh, Wait, Wild Ghost changes lethal? some stuff, though. If this is just lethal. You naturalize the minion, a 2 6 comes out, you double branching pass oh, for attack, and you hear ah, power for armor. Yeah. You hear power for attack to end Spotted the game. Spotted it. This is game. That's exactly what Green Sheep's counting, I think, right now, too. Yep. So, no, that was a terrible outcome. Apologies. <laughs> 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 I was not counting just simply amount of damage, <laughs> amount of damage pushed presented. with 1 3 and 1 1. <laughs> Through uh, a double taunted. Minion. You were convincing me too. I was like, "Oh, the one three can't die." You know, maybe. Well, you spotted the damage. Up. That's what they pay you the big bucks for. That's 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 my role in the desk. Is lethal spot. Green sheep able to power through. Still got two more games to go, though. Yeah. But we've seen even Paladin struggle sometimes. I I would say that of the decks in the band, where's the Paladin oh, yeah. band? From Green Sheep, the Even Warlock's banned away. Or it said, I was told Even Warlock was banned away. Apparently, it's, I mean, on the overlay, it's Paladin's banned away. Okay, so if the Paladin's banned away, then it's going to be Even Warlock and Shutterwalk Shaman into this Even Paladin. Okay, so forgive me about that one. We you know, perhaps I, I misheard at the start of this match. This is an interesting matchup. I'm not. Admirable, you are an Even Paladin enthusiast of amazement. What's your take on this match? Well, for me, I I, I just I, I think I favor even Warlock in this matchup a lot. Now, the, the big kickers to it are the equality turns. That's really, I think, where Viper's main push, you know, kind of regardless of how the game state's going, lies for him. A lot of times, Green Sheep is able to just, you know, fight for the board really aggressively. He's got early clears to keep Viper off snowballing boards. But there's not really much you can do against Equality and Avenging Wrath. And so true. the onus is on Green Sheep to be the aggressor in some form. And that's a, very, that's a very demanding thing. But you have the right kind of cards to do it. So when Viper starts off with the Acidic Swamp Ooze here, it's much more difficult for Green Sheep to push through when Viper's got Corpse Taker. Because no minion that he plays lives through 3-2 and 1-1 one, one on turn 3. Uh, and I think that's really the big deal that, that I'm looking at here is you know being able to land that Corpse Taker. Suddenly, I, I feel like Viper, you know, could could be in a pretty substantial lead because of that. Yeah, not only that, but if he picks up something like a Blessing of the Kings that we were talking about earlier, we were talking about the most powerful plays coming out from Even Paladin is that Coin Corpse Taker into that Blessing of the Kings. Right now, you know, he doesn't have necessarily the strongest follow up to the Corpse Taker, and maybe he's trying to convince himself not to commit the Corpse Taker. Maybe he wants to save the Coin for something like the Tarum. But I'm um, seeing a Coin, seeing a Corpse Taker. I want to do it admirable. Well, the big one is just the True Silver Champion. It's lining up so well in this spot. Oh, so you think maybe Viper is considering getting the True Silver down in order to clean up this Vulgar Homunculus so that way he can keep pushing a little bit of damage? Yeah, I think that's what he's debating. Like, that's the iterations I imagine he's going through right now. Is, is Trade Corpse Taker better or is True Silver better? He's going for True Silver. This does allow the smaller minions to keep getting in chip damage over and over which maybe Viper feels is more beneficial, especially because he has Sunkeeper Tarum, which favors a wider board state, and he has Avenging Wrath. 
sets Green Sheep down to 18 uh, to pay heed to um, Hooked Reaper in this spot. So now Green Sh uh, Viper can actually clear off the Mountain Giant if he wants to, and then get the Corpse Taker down with the Divine Shield. And that Divine Shield is so key if Green Sheep can't pop it and then Hellfire. So that was really smart from Viper. He didn't swing with the 1-1 one -one to stop a tapped Hooked Reaver on 5. And not only that, but setting up the True Silver meant that he could kill the Giant on the following turn with the two minions on board to then get the Corpse Taker down. So he threat checks, stops a Hooked Reaver, and develops his own board. Yeah, it's also just quite strong if Green Sheep doesn't have ideal plays in his situation. You know, one of the big ones I'm looking at, too, is like, if Green Sheep just has a mediocre hand with a bunch of AoE, but he's got Shroom Brewer on turn four. That allows Viper to push through the Shroom Brewer battle cry, and then at the same time, uh, be able to wipe out the 4-4 and have Presence on board. I think I think there's a lot of facets here that are working uh, really in Viper's favor. And the way that this was played, I think is, is this is quite beautiful. Like, there's not really much better I think he could have gotten out of this hand, you know? Th and this is why he was digging so deep on that previous turn. He's on there, draw the Hydrologist, instead of, you know, finding a Corpse Taker again, I think he's really trying to play to the Sunkeeper Terum on the following turn. He can also, he's been weaving in a Hero Power every single turn to try and maximize what the Sunkeeper will be able to do. Yeah, and, and here, the the Repentance is, you know, sometimes especially dangerous for Green Sheep when he wants to play Twilight Drake in this spot. You know, if this is really wise from Green Sheep to start containing the board, and you get the Plated Beetle down to absorb that Repentance. Without doing that, I think Green Sheep could have been in a lot of trouble. And now Viper's finally forced to play off that Corpse Taker, just the most mana-efficient play. But now that he's done that, Green Sheep is going to have a pretty strong answer for it. That's the, that's the really uh, you know big thing to me, is that if even Paladin gets to these spots where most of their life has been taken you know, deliberately, thinking all life taps and stuff that's going on, like Green Sheep can get through this and just squelch the assault from Viper. Like, how does Viper actually get substantial board presence after that? And, and, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, does he ever just have to play a wild Pyromancer if, if he doesn't draw another minion here? I mean, that's the way it's been panning out so far. It does have a quality Consecrate, so he's not necessarily worried about coupling the wild Pyromancer with the equality. We'll have that board clear later on, but I mean, you're exactly right. Viper is starting to run out of gas and pressure and will need something. This Wild Pyromancer might have to get on the board. And, and that tells Green Sheep a lot about Viper's hand, I feel like. Yeah, Wild Pyromancer is, is one of your turn yeah, six Wild Pyromancer is your best turn six play. Whoa. Oh, but it looks like... That's a, that's a Tarim instead. Yeah, this is a, uh, a Tarim if I've ever seen one. I mean, you know, well, maybe, maybe actually... There's Viper some equality consecrate for, here. Yeah, maybe Viper goes for an equality consecrate, pushes with quite a bit of damage, and then can fit in a hero power term on the following turn. As he knows, Green Sheep is going into seven mana. With Green Sheep going into seven mana, he can't do a power play of double four. Typically that's, you know, removal Hooked Reaver, removal Twilight Drake. And since he knows it'll have to be something like just removal, he could go for an equality consecrate there and then push the damage and have a Terra with a year power on the follow-up. Yeah, I, to me, the, just the big way to slice this is that Equality Avenging Wrath is just that powerful, where I think the Equality Consecration into the Terra hero power is a stronger two-turn punch, but what about when he gets to eight mana? You know, Equality Avenging Wrath is, like, game-ending so many times versus even Warlock. Oh, yeah, especially because even Warlock can't really go wide on the board, so at most they might have two, maybe three minions. And they're just so big stuff. the Avenging Wrath is guaranteed to deal five damage face. A lot of players have told me, even Paladin is a burn deck. You quickly get in damage, and you end the game with Avenging Wrath. It really is like a weird burn deck. Yes. Yeah, it does a lot to access Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> But you also have True Silver Champion, which is like, you know, Fireball with, with two spell damage. I'd take a Fireball with two spell damage. But it, it does cost two more. I'm curious about Spell Zerker in this deck now that we're talking about it as a burn deck. Is that deck. the, uh, the two, two mana, mana two, two three? three? And when it's, it's, uh, it's, when it's damaged, damage. you get plus two spell damage. You know, I'm thinking like you bump it and you Consecration. <laughs> Yeah, you put a Blessings of Kings on it. You attack into a Wandering Monster, and then you Consecration away a whole Spellstone board. And you realize it's a 3-3 Wandering Monster. Well, monster. you know, that's not... Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, semantics. Yeah, occasionally. I've never seen a Wandering Monster kill a minion that's been attacked by it. Doesn't exist. Hasn't happened for years. It's always Toothy Chest. <laughs> Wait, that would be bad. 
That has no attack. Oh, yeah, that would be bad. Oh, gosh. There's so many All flaws right. in our game Our plans. idea is sunken. <laughs> no longer works. Back to the drawing board. You know, even even with uh, Viper's secret choices there, Eye for an Eye is often a, a really tricky option versus even Warlock as well, because so many times when they have to pressure you, it's just one giant hit that comes in. And so if they're low enough on life total, it, it can force them to deviate from the game plan. However, it it's usually not pushing them strong enough to be able to matter uh, because they're fine playing defense until they can find something to, to, to hold themselves off, or, you know, to get in a little bit of chip damage or find Blood Reader hold on or what have you. So it's kind of a cute play, but I have found more often than not, it doesn't work how you typically plan it. This is getting to be so close to game for Viper. He's trying to set it up in a way that he can go Equality Avenging Wrath on the following turn, and then push some of this damage through. Yeah, the problem is this is a, a you know, that turn eight that you were talking about for Green Sheep. That power play. So Green Sheep does this to check for uh, Redemption first. I'm kind of surprised by this because I feel like Hellfire Spellstone was a fantastic looking turn for Green Sheep here. I think maybe it was because with... Uh, the oh defile. boy, this is this is not how I think Green Sheep pictured this going. I was gonna say with the defile, you could also go for uh, a this is dangerous. Well. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we can see the equality of engine ground. Maybe Green Sheep's just trying to put a lot of pressure on the board. I don't know about this one. I think this may mm, this may come back to bite him. The Hellfire you have to be really careful with. If you Hellfire that board. Tarim falls to four. You buff up your Spellstone. If your opponent had Redemption in that spot, they get a 2-1. So then you Spellstone the Tarim, and if you're really afraid of that 2-1 getting buffed, you, you hit it with the Hook Reaver. It. You go back up to 15. You're 15. You, you're, you're the lone minion in play. You know, the thing about it is that Green Sheep's not dead to a quality of Engine Wrath. And I, that may be what his plan actually is, is that if he sees a quality of Engine Wrath here, you know, maybe that's enough to just spell stone and get through it. Should I? Hmm. You know, that's something Viper's got to think about is what is he left with after he uses Equality Avenging Wrath if that's the play? I mean, maybe he just goes for an Equality Consecrate plus a Hero Power and then tries to, like... 3-1 and a 1-1. <laughs> 3-1 connects face, put them down. The here. equality feels more out of necessity here because there's just not really much left to do. I do agree do. with that. Gonna go with the Avenging Wrath, this gives you a five damage face. Usually. Yeah, there are some <laughs> weird scenarios where all of that would face and yeah. Viber kind of looks at it and then we're on Trollden suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this this afforded Green Sheep to be able to spell stone with, without Viper having a minion on board. And, and honestly, the more I look at it, that could have been part of his plan was he gets to Spellstone, skies are clear, and then he slams Blood Reaver Gul'dan. Maybe he's trying to bait that out. Not necessarily like a bait, but it's like if that happens, you're okay with it. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that. Spellbreaker just to have something to fight with. Is there a second Avenging Wrath in Viper's list? There is. There are two Avenging Wraths in Viper's list. And that, that probably is one of the reasons that spell that you know, the Spellbreaker comes down, is if it's second Avenging Wrath there and Green Sheep's at six, he's just dead. You know, even with the 4-3 down, sometimes he's just dead to Avenging Wrath. I mean, he would technically be dead to something like Consecration, True Silver as well. There was a lot. Yeah, I'm not sure about the tap. I feel like Green Sheep has the cards in hand to win. It's Gul'dan, it's so, Bone Mare. Gul'dan is probably enough. Gul'dan is powerful enough to get there. Yeah, but now it's a Corpse Taker in play. And that's scary. Is this a deviate to Beetle Bone Mare? My high school band. Beetle bone mare. <laughs> Did you play the kazoo? Yeah. Proud of you. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I was a triangle. Yeah, it's a cool dawn turn, I think, <laughs> all things considered. But is, is the consecration enough here? Is the consecration consecration ten? plus? Spike oh, that pushes seed? eleven. Wait, that's game. You trade the 2-2 two, two in, you put the Spike Ridge Steed on to the 3-3. Three, three. That's game! Blessings of Kings does even more. Yeah, Viper is going to the top 8. 
Three one over Green Sheep. That second Corpse Taker pulling some weight. I like to say it. Corpse Taker's blessings and kings on it is a win condition. Yeah, it certainly is. Well fought to Green Sheep uh, with a top 16 here at the tour stop, but Viper. A couple of those hands looked unstoppable, but that's part of the reason you play those decks is when you get.